Hey, 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 welcome back, Matrix. If you've just joined us, this is Tenfold Live and we're doing analytical geometry today. We've already covered one question, which was a really great question, covered a lot of analytical theory. It's a really cool question. And Avamilio, who sent in the question, won a TV. Guys, it's that easy. Send in your questions. Hit us up on our WhatsApp, on our Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. This show is proudly brought to you by Liberty and we're just so grateful to be here. We love doing what we do. If you're not sure of the timing, this show airs every Monday to Thursday, guys, from 5 to 6 p.m. Also, we have revision packages and stuff from our previous content that we put together from four until five, just to orientate you with the topic that we're doing that week. So make sure you tune in for that. Otherwise, grade 10 to matric. Guys, if you feel like the show isn't addressing your grade 10 issues or your grade 11 stuff, download our app. It's called Tenfold Education. It's available on both Android and iStores. It has the best videos on it, guys. We've put together such great lessons, example videos, stuff that really try to make you think, but also delve into your basics. Hopefully you understand your maths a bit better. Download our app, it's got great content on it. For now, we're gonna jump into a theory video just to give you a taste of what we put on our app and also just to help you identify some of the stuff that you might wanna work with in analytical geometry. So enjoy. The equation of a straight line there are different ways to write the equation of a straight line. Which one you use is determined by the information given in the question. The first one is the gradient intercept form, also called the standard form of a straight line. Y equals mx plus c. m is the gradient and c is the y intercept. The second one is the gradient point form y minus y1 equals m multiplied by the difference of x and x1. m is the gradient and x1 and y1 are the coordinates of a point on the line. The third one that is not used very often is the intercept form, which is x divided by a, where a is the x-intercept of a line plus y divided by b, where b is the y-intercept of the line equals 1. There are some special cases of equations of straight line graphs. For example, when x equals a, where a is an element of real numbers, we have a vertical straight line perpendicular to the x-axis and parallel to the y-axis. The gradient of this line is undefined. For example, x equals 3. When y equals a, where a is an element of real numbers, we get the equation of a horizontal line perpendicular to the y-axis and parallel to the x-axis. The gradient of this line will be zero, for example, y equals negative two. Cool, cool, cool. Guys, if you like what you saw, we have so much more content, little snippets like that on our app, just to give you a brush up on your theory, help you orientate yourself in the subject, help you try and enjoy maths, because we like to think that our videos are kind of pretty. Maybe not, maybe not, maybe maths is just an ugly subject, but we're here for you. We're trying to help you guys. We're gonna jump right into the next question. It's from Kirsty. I love this question. It's got some great theory in it and a little bit of dodgy stuff, because I looked at it at first and I didn't understand what it was asking me, but let's check her out. Hi Tenfold, my name is Christy. Can you please assist me with this question? Okay, this question is very challenging because it involves a lot of unknowns. There are A, B, and X and Y variables that just make the algebraic stuff look a little bit scary. I know when God put the alphabet into maths, everyone groaned. And that's why we're here. We're here to help you. Okay, so this question is going to help us understand the concept of a straight line function and how one input results in another input based on the rule. So let's just check this question out and try and understand it. It says, the points P at 4a minus 7 and 6b squared minus 13 and Q at 2a minus 4 and 2b squared minus 4 lie on a line with the equation y equals to 3 into x plus a. Calculate the values of a and b. Okay, so what I was saying beforehand, guys, about trying to help you understand input and output values in a rule. 
When you get given an ugly, ugly question like this, and it says that the x value sits at 4a minus b, whatever that even means, and the y value sits at 6b squared minus 7, it means that you've taken that exact x value, put it into some other rule, and it has generated the y value that they've given you. Okay, you need to understand that, guys. So when they give you a representation that isn't exactly a number, so like x isn't equal 3, x is equal to a whole mess of an equation, it means that that x value is given there and you need to put it into the rule or whatever you're using your equation and it will generate its corresponding y value. Let's look at this and see if I can help that make sense. This here is the entire x value at p. Similarly, this is the entire x value at q. When we put them into this formula here, they generate the y values that correspond with them. Okay, so I'm going to write this in standard form just because I prefer it, the y equals mx plus c. So we get mx, 3x, and c is given to us as 3a. There is an unknown there, but that is still a constant. So we're saying that if you take this x value and you plug it in there, it means that it's going to generate this y value, okay? And because, guys, the moment you have equations that are in two variables, it means that you're going to work with two simultaneous equations. Three variables, three simultaneous equations. That's how it works. If you're solving for unknowns, try and find the same amount of equations so that you can manipulate to solve for variables. So, at P, y is equal to 3x plus 3a. Okay, so 3, x was given to us as 4a minus 7 plus 3a. And we know that that is equal to the y value at p, which is 6b squared minus 13. Let's continue to manipulate this. So we get 12a minus 21 plus 3a is equal to 6b squared minus 13. Double check that. Perfect. Okay, if we continue to solve for or like substitute and simplify this, we're going to get 12a plus 3a is 15a minus 21 plus 13 would give us minus 8 is equal to 6b squared. Now I'm going to try and isolate a because isolating b means we need to start square rooting and that's going to make it really ugly. So if I try to isolate a, I get 15a is equal to 6b squared plus 8. And then to isolate a completely, we divide everything by 15. So we six 6b squared plus 8 divided by 15. That gives us our first simultaneous equation. Now, if we look at point Q, which was the other point we were given on that equation, remember y is equal to 3x plus 3a. At Q, x was given to us as 2a minus 4. So we have 3 multiplied by x, which is 2a minus 4, plus 3a gives us the y value at Q. And the y value at Q is 2b squared minus 4. Same method, we multiply out and then simplify. So we get 6a minus 12 plus 3a is equal to 2b squared minus 4. Let's continue to simplify. So 6a plus 3a is 9a minus 12 is equal to 2b squared minus 4. Then we can say 9a, negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8, is equal to 2b squared. And again, I'm going to try and express it in terms of a, so that I can equate the two equations. So we get 9a is equal to 2b squared plus 8, because you add it to the other side. And to isolate a completely, we get 2b squared plus 8, all over 9 and that is our second simultaneous equation okay so now we have one equation here another one down here because they're both in terms of a if I say 
A is equal to this situation, but A is also equal to that situation, it means that the two situations are equal to each other because they represent the same A value. Remember, that's how simultaneous equations work. So, now all we have to do is equate them. So, the first one was 6B squared plus 8 over 15. 6B squared plus 8 all over 15, which was our equation 1 is equal to equation 2, which is 2b squared plus 8 all over 9, equation 2. Now, I want to try and get rid of these ugly denominators. So, if we cross multiply, we get rid of the denominator. So, 6 multiplied by 9 is 54b squared, plus 8 multiplied by 9 is 72 equals on the other side 2 multiplied by 15 is 30 b squared plus 8 multiplied by 15 is let me do some quick mental maths 8 multiplied by 5 is 40 carry the 4 1 multiplied by 8 is 8 plus 4 is 12 so we get plus 120. now you see easy peasy guys it's in terms of the same variable so if we take the 30 over to the other side, 54 minus 30 is 24 b squared is equal to 120 minus 72 is 48. And now we just simply solve for b. So we're trying to isolate b squared first, so we divide both sides by 24. And we get b squared is equal to 2. Okay, so now guys, here comes the tricky bit. When you have a value of a variable squared is equal to something else. Yes, naturally you're going to square root both sides to get rid of that squared, but you don't know if it's the positive or negative root. Remember, 16, if you square 4, you get 16, but if you square negative 4, you also get 16. So there are two different roots to that square. So here we have b squared is equal to 2. Obviously you want to square root b squared to isolate b on its own, that's going to give us the square root of 2, but we don't know if it's the positive or negative. So you have to specify, guys, you have to specify that it's either the positive or negative root 2. Okay, so that's B solved for. Now we simply have to substitute B into one of our A equations. I'm going to choose this one because it seems a little less daunting. So we have 2B squared plus 8 over 9 plus 8 all over 9, which means that a is equal to 2 multiplied by, if you square a square root, you just get the number, plus 8 all over 9, and that gives us 4 plus 8 all over 9, which is 12 over 9, and some teachers prefer it in their simplest form, so try to simplify your fractions. And that is a. Okay. So, easy peasy stuff guys, but this question might have been a little bit tricky just because you look at it and you see this whole rot of A's and B's and things and it just looks a little bit complicated. Just remember, if you have X and Y's, it means that that X has been put through a formula or an equation or a rule or something and generated its Y. Okay, so they go together, they go hand in hand. Hopefully this question has helped you out. Kirsty. thank you so much for sending it to us. We love hearing from you guys. Thanks again to Liberty for sponsoring us. We're going to jump into an ad break because I need to rest my brain a little bit. I think you guys need to. I'm really excited for the rest of the show. Stay tuned, but enjoy the ad break. <laughs> 